Warning, cheaters may contain adult themes and strong language. Parents are cautioned that this program may not be suitable for children. Coming up on this episode of Cheaters. At a local bar, this kiss was a little over the top. I mean, I, I've got to evaluate every friendship I have now. And how many of them have slept with him? You're cheating on me, you son of a Can you explain yourself? I had to show I had but it shown to me of you and him. From Cheaters surveillance cameras, you are about to view actual true stories filmed live, documenting the pain of a spouse or lover caused by infidelity. This program is both dedicated to the faithful and presented to the false-hearted to encourage their renewal of temperance and virtue. Just like you're just trying to keep a big secret from me. I just can't go on anymore. I need to know the truth. I don't like being the one that has to show you this. Oh. I asked her about his, and she said nothing was going on. Do you want to confront him? Oh, yeah. Take me there. Yeah, I got him. Hey, go. Go. Get right. up here. Come on. Come on. Go. 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 This is, like, not how this is supposed Whatever. to work. Just go. Go with him. <laughs> I love him. Real Reality Television as brought to you by Cheaters Detective Agency's Private Eyes on Cheaters. Hello, I'm Joey Greco. Thank you for watching this installment of Cheaters. Allow me to introduce Brock Mayo, a salesman who suspects his partner hides a secret lover. Tired of second guessing himself, Brock contacts Cheaters for clarification. Brock Mayo, age 33, a traveling salesman who fears that his boyfriend, Stephen, may be on the prowl while Brock works out of town. When Stephen and I did start dating, we, uh, I was living with a roommate at the time, and the chemistry between the two of us was so strong, um, you know, it was, it was exciting. Um, it's still exciting. I still love him. But it was, it was magical at first. I don't, I don't know why we're growing apart. And when I ask him, he, he just doesn't want to, it's like you pushed him against a wall. He doesn't want to face it. He doesn't want to talk about it. And, you know, I'm spinning my wheels. I, I love him very much. I want to be with him. I want him to be with me. But I feel like there's something going on because we're, we're just not communicating anymore. I need to know why you know, he's pulled away so much. I need to know why there's no interest in any type of sexual activity. Um, sex is not that important in a relationship, but no sex is. I'm just not certain what's going on. That's why I fear that there, there may be someone in that picture. If this relationship ends, then I will probably spend some time getting myself back focused on my career and, and it'll be a while before I date again. If you suspect infidelity in your relationship, Cheaters licensed investigators may be able to provide you assistance. Exercise your right to be informed. Stephen Mongold, age 31. An office manager suspected of spicing up his love life with some alternative after hours excitement. Investigation day two. Cheaters investigators get hot on Mongold's trail and follow him and an unknown companion to a local outdoor patio where the two sit in plain sight of Cheaters surveillance cameras. The unknown companion cautiously looks around causing Cheater's detectives to wonder about the nature of his paranoia. At first, the interaction seems quite harmless, but Cheater's detectives soon tune in to some possible lovey-dovey when the unknown companion playfully feeds Mongold in a gesture that pushes the boundaries of simple friendship. Such possibility quickly becomes a certainty when the unknown companion pulls Mongold closer and engages him in an interesting display of public affection. The two seem to have no worries when it comes to getting caught, as they casually continue to touch and squeeze each other. Finally, with their preliminary dirty work done, the two pay their tab and skedaddle arm in arm down the boulevard. Investigation day three. 
The two lovebirds apparently can't get enough of each other and convene the very next afternoon at another drinking establishment. The unknown companion, now identified as Chad Collum, caresses Mongol's leg suggestively in broad daylight. As if to add to the insult, Cheater's investigators have also confirmed that Colum is part of a larger group of friends that includes Brock himself. After slamming down a few quick toddies, the two really begin to purr and proceed to shamelessly make out in public without any regard for Brock's feelings or those of anyone else. Investigation day five. Cheaters watchdogs keep a close eye on Mongold as he leaves the apartment in Brock's very own vehicle. Detectives follow close behind as he heads over to Chad Collum's duplex. Meanwhile, Mongol tries to stroke Brock with a quick cell phone call to the unsuspecting victim. Good morning, this is Brock. Hey, what's going on? Hello, how are you, honey? Good. Did you know it's a lover appreciation day? Today's lover's appreciation day? Yeah. Well, I appreciate you. You do? Yeah. You know, when's our anniversary? Like three weeks from now? You better remember the anniversary. It's the 13th. <laughs> what are we going to do? Um, I don't know. Maybe, uh, let's make reservations and get with us dinner. All right. Well, I will see you at the house. All right. Love you. Thanks for calling. Bye. Bye. Two hours later, the two lovers emerge from the duplex and come prancing down the stairs. Cheaters' investigators can only speculate as to what activities took place inside. Unable to restrain their unbridled emotions, the two insatiable lovers indulge themselves in a long farewell kiss. Their disregard for Brock's feelings could not be more obvious, and Cheaters' detectives fulfill their obligation to present Brock with the bitter results of their investigation. After the break, the confrontation. With Steve's deceit now exposed, Cheaters moves to corroborate Brock's intuitions. Unwilling to remain a victim, Brock takes fate into his own hands. Stephen, over the past couple weeks, have you noticed a little difference uh, in his behavior since we started the investigation? Um, he's just really pulling away. Um, and it's just there's always an excuse why he needs to be away, why we can't spend quality time together in the evenings. Um, you know, it's my fault that I'm out of town a lot right now because I've been traveling to see my family so much. Um, but when I am in town, I expect to spend the time I'm here with him. Well, the reason I, I brought you out here, like I told you, is uh, so I can show you what we've gathered. I have a bit of a problem with some of the information, and I want to make sure that uh, this conduct that he represents is, is OK for you or it's not OK for you. So let's go ahead, and, and we'll just get right to it. And I know no other way to do it but just to show you the evidence that we've been able to gather. Um, on this particular day of investigation, we caught up with Stephen at this local restaurant, sitting together. Here was the fellow that we saw him with. Now, you're going to recognize him. Oh, yeah, that's Chad. Yes. I didn't have much of a problem with them having dinner together, because I know you all are all friends. Now, this is the part that got me. There's got to be an explanation, though, that, that I that, that's... We, we follow them. Here they are, arm in arm. On this day of investigation at a local bar, this kiss was a little over the top for friends. Now, here you are about a minute later. You came in. Now, I want you to watch this, their body posture and behavior. It was very frustrating for me to see, and I wanted to find out from you if that was appropriate behavior on your... It's not appropriate, but there, there's got to be a reason behind it. I, Chad would never do that. Stephen wouldn't do it. You just saw something here, obviously. Now, I'm going to show you one more piece of information. On this day of investigation, you called us. You said that Stephen was leaving the house using your car. Right. Did he tell you that he was going to Chad's?
but after a couple of hours, they, they came out. Now, in my book, this looks like a romantic relationship, and I had a problem with it. I, I have a huge problem with it, and I will address this okay. uh, with both of them. Yeah. That's the reason I brought you out here, and they're together right now, and they're at a, a little bar right down the street here. And I would like to go over there. Yeah. That's what I thought. Well, this is it. Let's go. Let's go have a talk with him. Let's go right to him. Hang on for me. Hold 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 on for me. Where are we? They're out front? Come on. They're back out front. How do we miss them? How do we miss them? Oh, Steven. Come here. What going on? What going on? What do you do? What? Damn, I hate you both. What are you doing? You're cheating on me. Can you explain yourself? I had to show I had footage shown to me of you and him, you backstabbing two-faced. What the hell, the hell is going on? He showed me video. My name's Tommy from the TV show Cheaters. Honey, I'm not and talking to you in front of a bunch of cameras. This he came to us two weeks ago. Had a you. What is and this? I had to show him footage of you two together, kissing, holding hands. You've been lying to him on several occasions. I hate you. I, I'm not doing oh, this. Come on, explain come on. yourself. No. What the hell's going on? No, why would you do? Why would you do this? What? You're not getting out of here that easy. What the hell is going on? No. What about these phone conversations? What about the footage I have you with this other guy? I, I'm not doing this on camera. Why would you do about, this? I will talk. What the f is going on? Shut up. I wonder what the f is going on. What you're doing, Steven? I no. saw footage of you and him together. I'm so sick of your... You're just whiny, 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 whiny. I'm so tired of it. Maybe you could satisfy him at home and he wouldn't come to me. Coming up, the conclusion. I'm so sick of your... You're just whiny, 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 whiny. I'm so tired of it. Maybe you could satisfy him at home and he wouldn't come to me. You. I thought you were my friend, you son of a... Why would you do this to him? Hey, you just gonna run off? My scar, you just gonna run off? That's how much you care, huh? Good lord, what's he trying to do? Sleep with every one of our friends? That's two that I know of now. I've been out of town probably six of the last eight weekends. Um, I, I don't know. Chad has been, he's one of us. We have a very tight-knit group of friends, and we all hang out together. I would have never questioned that. It's just too hard to comprehend because we have too many friends that are always out, and why somebody hadn't seen that and said something to me. That's I mean, I've, I've got to evaluate every friendship I have now. And how many of them have slept with him? I thought we were better friends than that. When you're out of town, he's back. Are you going to come home? <laughs> uh, I'm coming home. You're not welcome there. You're not welcome. Fine, I'll go get my stuff and you don't have to see me anymore. You don't feel that you need to explain anything to him? I will explain it to him. I'm not going to do it in front of all these cameras. You owe me that, Stephen. Not in front of these cameras, no I don't. Why don't you I just... don't want you at the house tonight. That's fine. I'll go get my stuff. I'll be gone before you get home. Why don't we back off a little bit and let you guys talk for you? I, I'm, we will talk, but I'm not going to do it here. Somebody that cares for you gave you his heart and then to just step all over him like that. If you want to talk about this, I will be at home. Y'all just spend a minute. Just this just is go this up is there. his we'll, typical. He's always going to clam up. He doesn't want to face I, anything I'm bad. Not do it in front of any, all of these cameras. We'll back here. off. Let you guys just talk. About what? 
I want to know what's going on. I will tell on. you why. I'm not doing it here. You should be more of a man and step up. He's not a man is the problem. 30-year-old infant. I guess I can take this off. Hell, it won't come off. I don't suppose you have any wire cutters, do you? I thought it was going to be forever. Following the encounter, Brock contemplates a total change in his priorities. At the end of the show, we reveal Brock's final thoughts on the matter. But next, Cheaters welcomes Aaron Miller, a young man caught in a fling with his big brother's girl. Aaron Miller, age 23. Aaron reflects on the way he and his brother resolved the matter of a woman coming between them. When it came up on me, it was kind of embarrassing and kind of nervous because I didn't realize it was, it was all they're going to show up, and it's kind of scary. So I kind of just wanted to leave and do it. I didn't want to deal with this, all the confrontation in front of Starbucks and places like that and, and in front of a lot of people. It's kind of, kind of embarrassing to myself. You know what, man? I'm fine. Come on. Huh? Hey, that's easy. Do it. Huh? Hey. Dude, that's what. And dude, she don't. She didn't even want me to be anyways, dude. I oh, want. Oh, oh, I. I. Uh. Uh. Yeah. I don't even. I don't even. Oh my God. Why? 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 Well, to be truthfully honest, the very first thing that popped in my head when I saw my brother, the confrontation was, I got caught, and now it's like, oh. But then after that, it was like betrayal, and I was like, oh, now my mom's gonna know, and it's just all this betrayal towards your brother that everybody's going to hear, and I didn't like that. Oh, my God. I don't understand this. I don't understand at all. I'm through with both of you. I know I did. I messed up. I mean, it was also, I was, I was you know, lonely and stuff. So, I mean, I want to make everybody seem like I'm a bad brother. Because we've had our... Sure, we do my brother do things to each other, you know, but I mean, you know, I, I was under express. She was playing me pretty good because I thought, you know, they're breaking up and fighting and stuff. So, I mean, I didn't know what was going on and I never really talked to my brother about his relationships, so. I think I'd go to, I mean, I'm here on national TV and I don't understand why the hell you're doing this to me. I'm shaking. I don't know why the hell you're doing this to me. I can do you'll scare the hell out of me. Oh, this is. <laughs> There, there was nights I was going to talk to my brother about it when I was talking to Paula, you know. But she knows, she's like, well, hold on. You know, we're about to break up. She's going to get to the breakup first, and you can talk to him. And I, and I really wanted to. Cause, I mean, my brother and I are, you know, we're brothers, so it's kind of hard to do stuff behind his back. I just want to go home. <laughs> yeah, I got something to say to my brother. I mean, I love him a lot, and I'm glad, I'm not glad it's happened. But we both agreed that stuff happens for a reason, and it has made us a lot better, closer. And I cherish what we have now. It's a lot better than we had before. So I love him a lot. I'm glad we did this. After his confrontation with Mongold and Cullum, Brock took stock of his personal life and concluded that there was no place in it for either of them. Brock is quite angry about the situation and went so far as to say that the two scoundrels deserved each other. Brock no longer communicates with either, nor does he consider them as being within his circle of friends. Although Stephen Mongold declined to be interviewed by cheaters, his companion Chad Collum was willing to speak briefly with investigators. He disclosed that he and Mongold continue to maintain a casual relationship, but that nothing serious is in the works. As for Brock, Collum only said that he had little sympathy for him and that Brock was largely to blame for the events that took place. When pressed further, Mr. Collum declined to elaborate. 